if you're a flight simulator enthusiast like me, uh, you want it to run 8.1 so you can do this. So we're going to go through the steps for installation and configuration to ensure it works. So it took a lot of research and testing to finally come up with one that, that worked all the time. But here's the first of all you're going to need is a service pack one after you have your, of course, your regular installation. And you can download it in several languages. Now if you have the acceleration expansion pack, you're not going to need service pack two because you're not supposed to install it. But if you don't have the acceleration pack, you can download the service pack two at this link. It's in our description for the video uh, how to get to it. So the first thing we did is we installed Flight Simulator X. Now, I'm going to skip through all the stuff about configuring the directories it goes in and all that stuff. You, need to, you know how to do all that stuff and everything. All the other different options here, we're just going to get right to it. I do want to mention that during the install, you're going to see screens like this that are coming up uh, that talk about what's available in it. And it's worth noting that this one is one of the last technical ones. If you have Flight Microsoft Flight, the new version, it doesn't have all the technical, it's just a flying game versus a flight simulator like this truly is. So after you go through the activation processes, again, just putting your serial numbers in, you'll come up to here. And here we have three different levels. You can choose any level. I chose pilot. I'm not really a pilot, but I want all the detail. So choose your level until you can get started. And the first time it launches, uh, when you do this, it's going to launch into a uh, low resolution version. Uh, and you're going to have to go in later and configure that. We're going to leave the configuration specific to the end because it has something to do with how we make sure it runs correctly without crashing. Now it came up in this weird resolution because it doesn't match my assistant resolution on my monitor. But that just did that. We got out of that, reconfigured and everything. It ran seemingly okay. But it was time to install the patch. So I have the patch here. And I'm going to go ahead and run the patch for uh, Service Pack 1. Okay, so it comes up and says, oh, you want to do this, there's an agreement and all that, so you can do that. So, of course, you have to read all that, ha, ha and hit and accept. And it only takes a little bit of time, but it goes in there and uh, does the configuration, replaces all the files it needs to. Again, skipping to the end, it says it's successfully completed. It should have no errors here, everything should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, click on close here. So you would think you want to install Service Pack 2, but what you don't test don't work. So I thought I'd test Service Pack 1 to see about its compatibility with Windows 8 first. So here we are flying uh, full screen mode now because I changed the resolution settings and all that. And, and you can see that uh, in the settings now, there's a, uh, it wasn't there before, but there's now 32-bit in here okay so it is was 16-bit before so there's better resolution available after the installation of this and, uh, but then again uh, we don't still not into direct X yet we still haven't got to the acceleration pack or to the uh, or or service pack 2 so we're just gonna test a few things here and everything seems to be going fine uh, doesn't seem to have any crashes however when I ran this and I I went into certain airplanes and certain scenery it crashed. For example, when I use this particular aircraft, maybe because it's big and complex, it uh, actually crashed more often. I would use Nevada, and it would crash almost every time. Actually, even the small planes crashed then, out in the desert in Nevada and everything. Didn't know why. Tested different uh, settings for trilinear, linear, uh, anti-aliasing, and all that. Uh, but for the most part, everything worked fine. As you can see here, I've got multiple windows I'm opening up and everything. Everything seems to be working uh, correctly. Uh, really a great experience. So again, uh, choosing whichever uh, particular aircraft I want to use and everything, I went through a series of tests, and for the most part, they flew perfectly fine. Everything seems to be flying well, uh, responsive. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller here. But then, after switching to several different aircraft, and sometimes going in and out of menus, and sometimes not, it, all, it wasn't any real rhyme or reason, but all of a sudden I would get this. The flight simulator has stopped working, uh, dreaded error message, closed program, and we'd have to quit the program. So what to do? Well, you can need to do one of two things. If you have Service Pack 2 and you don't have the acceleration expansion pack, uh, don't install uh, don't install 2, but if you have the acceleration pack, do not install 2. The next step is, even on Microsoft's website, it says do not uh, install that. So we're going to go ahead and install the acceleration pack here. Now it's a very long install, just like a lot of the files for Flight Simulator and everything, so I've cut past all that stuff. But the whole here is either the expansion pack, the acceleration management, or the 
regular service pack two is going to fix the problems. So after this is finished, uh, I'm going to go in for another round of testing. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and back to the start screen and uh, launch the uh, icon that I had set up earlier. Uh, now I'm not going to go through the entire expansion pack installation. Uh, there's another serial number for that. You need to do all that kind of stuff. So after it launches and comes up, you're going to have to run through that process. Now the hope here is after the expansion pack finishes that either it or the service pack 2 fixes all the problems and it runs perfectly fine in uh, Windows 8.1. That way you'll know if whatever configuration you currently have, whether or not you have to either back up an installation or reinstall to uh, have it work correctly. So after all that, it comes up here and of course here's the regular starting screen. Now I'll skip through all the new features it shows you and all that stuff, but basically you go in and you select your aircraft, set up your resolution and all that and hopefully you'll be able to fly your aircraft and uh, get started. Now unlike uh, Flight Simulator 2004 where some had some preview problems with Windows 8.0, it was actually also fixed in 8.1, but here you can see your preview of your aircraft, everything that you need to see before you, you start your, your flight. Now of course here inside, and we go to the settings, you need to set up your system. If you look here, you can select like I expect it ultra high and here's all the settings and automatically sets to it, recognize my card. And you would do this for your card as well. Select whichever one you want, probably the highest resolution. Because remember, this was a 2006 game, so all, most video cards nowadays are much more capable and should be able to run it fine. That being said, I chose the ultra high and uh, I had several crashes during the course of the program. After it, uh, it ran, it was no real rhyme or reason. I tested uh, with different aircraft, different scenery, and it, it did seem to be, you know, confined to a certain ones, but there was no real rules. So, so that, as you can see, it's running great and everything. I can select different views and all that. Everything appears to be uh, perfect, working perfectly. But sooner or later, uh, no matter what aircraft it was, uh, and after testing quite a bit, uh, sooner or later it would just break, and then you'd get this kind of error. So the real question became, uh, what do we do about it? Uh, how do we get that to stop? So I uh, went and did some more testing and some more configurations and everything, and did some to where we could see if the program would be stable. So I won't bore you with all the tests and everything, but uh, literally tested uh, 10, 15 planes and everything, different scenarios, and uh, eventually get a crash and everything. Uh, but then decided, uh, well, uh, how could we really test this? So we went into the configuration screen here, and we decided to go in here and change some of the settings uh, piece by piece, one by one. So the first thing we did was we went in here and changed the display settings, okay? And if you can see here, the top setting is says custom, and that's exactly what we ended up with. And it's not that custom, actually, because uh, when we went in here and tested the different types of uh, settings and everything for all different things, eventually we would crash. We turned on DirectX off and on. Uh, we tried everything possible to... Uh, get it to work. Nothing worked. And if we did the advanced settings, uh, just went to the, with the faults for there's uh, low, medium, high, and ways with the ultra high settings and everything, uh, that didn't work. I didn't change any of the tabs for any of the other types of configurations, just the graphics tab. So eventually, uh, after trying ultra high, if you can see here, the target frame rate is only set to 20. And that turned out to be significant because after testing it at different levels, uh, lowering it, how it put it at 60, uh, did a whole bunch of things. I finally decided just to go to unlimited. Guess what? Turned out to be the key. Haven't had a crash since. Now, this demonstrates compatibility with Windows 8. I decided to do a split screen. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Windows 8 has the ability to run two different programs in split sides of the window, including the desktop on one side and the regular Windows 8 app on the other. So we go in here, we launch the Bing Finance app and everything, come over here, let that run, come over back to the desktop, and sure enough, there's Flight Simulator X. So I can sit there and change my daytime settings, to night, or nighttime to daytime, or whatever other settings I want, no crashes, uh, which I got sometimes before. There's Flight Simulator X, I can go in here and change, of course, my cockpit view, and I happen to like spot plane a lot, uh, because I am not a pilot, I'm just an enthusiast. So I go over here and change this to the whatever window I want. And I can go ahead and start playing my game. You can see it. Now those artifacts you see there are typical whether or not you're in a windowed mode. You get some of those in close-ups on the ground. 
But then you can see here once we uh, start up and everything, uh, everything runs perfectly fine. I can sit there and taxi and fly and everything else. Uh, the aircraft performs normally. Uh, let me grab my joystick or my controller and we get to do a takeoff. And then you can switch between aircraft. This is just like a regular window desktop mode. You can sit there and decide to choose a different desk, different aircraft, a different location. All those settings are available to you. None crashed, which was not the case earlier. It crashed all the many, half the time. It crashed because of the excess in the menus and everything. Now this is a windowed mode, so I decided to test that in full screen mode. And here we are now in full screen mode, same exact area, starting with the P-51 again. Now, so we can sit there and fly uh, different aircraft again. We're going to switch over, and now we're with a jet. Uh, we'll do that one for a while as well. And zoom in, zoom out. Nothing caused it to crash. Uh, you see the vapor trails. We'll switch again to another aircraft. And uh, there's the, the Airbus again. Uh, everything working perfectly. Uh, we'll switch back here to, uh, we're going to go to the uh, F-18. Uh, all the control services rendered properly, uh, everything's just perfectly fine. And then uh, go back to the sports plane again. Again, uh, it's what you would expect uh, in uh, a good flight simulator program. Perfection. Now, what's interesting is that we went ahead and uh, I'm changing back to the jet for a second so I can get to the coast a little faster. Uh, but we're going to test one more thing. Uh, as we get closer to the coast, I'm going to switch here to the uh, one of the seaplanes. So we'll uh, skip to the coast here and then change over to the seaplane. And the uh, purpose of this is going to want to see some of the nice features that the DirectX is as far as texturing goes. Uh, you can already see the water down here and everything, so let me adjust my uh, trim here a little bit and we'll head in for a landing. So uh, here we are in a close up for landing and you'll see here the shadow of the aircraft is normal but then you also see the reflection of the actual aircraft in the body, in the, of the water. Uh, and as we approach this boat here, you'll see the shadow first and then you'll see the reflection of the aircraft, even colors coming in here. We'll bounce up there, see some water effects. Uh, we'll do it again here and there it is there. So anyway, you'll see how it moves very nicely uh, as the aircraft approaches the water. So we'll go ahead and land, and then uh, we'll do a real quick takeoff here. So we're going to accelerate here in a second, and there we are, stirring up a little more water, the reflection moves, and there we go. So if you're like me, uh, you're probably pretty happy that FXX seems to work perfectly well in Windows 8. Uh, it gives us a few more years at least. Uh, you can always switch over to one of the other flight simulators, but uh, if you want to have nice effects and everything, uh, good graphics and a very detailed uh, system environment to where you can be anywhere from a novice to a pilot, uh, it looks like that flight simulator X, uh, you have nothing to fear from uh, Windows 8 because it can run and run well. So pass the word around flight simulator enthusiast, uh, 8.1 is nothing to fear. At least not for uh, Flight Simulator FX. I have a whole bunch of other videos on other games, including Max Payne and a few others. And 8.1 seems to be the trick. So uh, good luck to you, and I hope you enjoy your uh, Flight Simulator flying days. And don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. I have over 100 Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 videos, and we're publishing more all the time.